Well, greetings, everybody. I hope that I find you all in uh, great spirit, the Holy Spirit, this day. I hope you're not all going out of your mind and bananas by uh, the lack of things to do outside or with each other at this time. I mean, you know, a lot of these things we should have been doing. And welcome to the seventh day of the month of a viv or a bib. Uh, something that can help you take up your time that you may uh, find rather maddening. It's kind of like when somebody quits smoking, you know, and then all of a sudden they got all the time in the world all day long to do whatever they need plus. And, uh, you know, it, it's just maddening not to do what they normally do. I know because I've quit before. I've quit for five years, but I seen no sense in it. I got no health benefit from quitting or from smoking or, you know, either or on that subject. But uh, I prefer to smoke. I smoke uh, natural tobacco. I don't use uh, anything that's got the chemicals or derivatives in there to keep you addicted. I'm not promoting smoking. I'm just saying it's what works for me. Uh, here is something that can really help you with the time that you have extra on your hands. Just open this book and start right from Genesis 1 and read all the way to the end here in Revelations chapter 22 to the last verse. And it should keep you busy for a while. Now, as far as uh, produce and such, I was watching a video earlier that talked about washing vegetables like you wash your hands for 20 seconds. And it's like, I mean, some of these people are insane. And I think it was put out by the government from the way that it was uh, presented. But, you know, it's crazy. At first, it shows a woman that's putting soap on her hands, lathering up her hands, washing her hands for 20 seconds, and then says... Now, you do the same with vegetables, you know. She starts off with a melon. She says, now you need to, you know, to wash it off for 20 seconds. And all she does is stick it under the water and let it run for 20 seconds on there. And she explains how when you cut into it, that it will uh, transfer bacteria and germs and such of that sort, bugs, into the fruit of the melon if you don't wash it. Well, there was very little washing to it. And as you know, on the outside of a melon, those rough layered melon, I think it was like a, uh, a cantaloupe actually, cantaloupe melon. And you know, the rough outside, there's plenty of cracks and crevices in there. And what I recommend for you to do, and you may have one at your house already, is a spray bottle. And just fill it up with hydrogen peroxide 3%. Spray down your vegetables with the hydrogen peroxide solution. Don't wipe them off, but uh, let it sit there. You know, put it in like a drain or in your sink. Spray it down well. Let it set for a couple of minutes and then fill your sink up partly with water and let the vegetables soak. The hydrogen peroxide will kill off most of germs, bacteria, and such, but it also will increase the shelf life of your vegetation. I just wanted you to know that. I use, as I had stated before, I use MMS, or the uh, Mineral Solution. Uh, this one's from Healthy Action. Uh, this is water purification drops. It will purify, it will actually... Uh, neutralize most of the pesticides and things that are sprayed on the vegetables. But what I really wanted to speak about was something that can be taken as completely amazing almost, especially for children. Uh, they can have a great learning experience at the same time create food for themselves. These here are seeds. Uh, this is a mixture of uh, certified organic broccoli, alfalfa, radish, and clover seeds. And what I did was I took my spoon here, this is my normal spoon I eat with, uh, and I filled it up one time, and I put it into this jar. And then I got just, oh, about maybe a quarter of a tea, you know, this teaspoon more, and put it in there when I first started to do my sprouts here. Now I think that this is about four days old here. But you want what you want to do is you want to rinse your sprouts at least twice a day. And the way that I started off is just before I go to bed, I'll put the sprout 
seed into the jar and I'll put some distilled water on there. I don't like using city water and you know some people say it's all right to do so but I prefer not to have the chlorine and the toxins and the fluoride and everything else absorbed into these uh, marvelous vegetables to be eaten later. So I have distilled water. I've got a distilled water machine and I'll put water in here and these caps are marvelous okay they got little teeny holes on them uh, for six of these I think I paid around oh thirteen dollars delivered but I noticed that even the same vendor that I got these from increased the price of these by about three dollars so it takes about sixteen dollars to get six of these now I got them from eBay took forever for them to come in but they came in uh, the evening after they came in, like I say, before just before I went to bed, I put the uh, seeds in there. I put, believe it or don't, you know, one and about a quarter of this here. And this, this doesn't actually even hold a full tablespoon. And I put it into the jar. I rinsed it off with distilled water, and I let the water out of the jar, and I rinsed them another time. And then I put in a little bit of water, about that much, which completely covered the seeds. And you let them soak. And that gives me something to, to actually wake up for in the morning, was to wake up and, you know, swish it around and empty all the old water out of there. Now after that, and, and what's neat about these caps is you can put it right on a flat plate uh, because they got these little knobbies here on the bottom of this so when you set it on a plate air can get through there and circulate into the jar and it also allows water to drip out down onto the plate so it doesn't rot your sprouts these are excellent for everything by the way you can uh, put them on sandwiches you could I like to just dip them in uh, uh, water and oil with vinegar in there you know that that's really what I like to do or else you know get some uh, certified organic and make sure it is organic uh, salad dressings and such but as you grow these you want to make sure you rinse them off like at least two times a day you don't have to fill the jar all the way to the top you know just put in enough and then kind of like you know very careful you don't want to slam these things around you don't want to shake it like you're you know mixing up uh, the ketchup bottle that you haven't used in a while or something because the roots in here are very delicate and you don't want to break them. If you break them off, they can have a tendency to start spoiling, rotting, and contaminating the rest of your sprouts. But I like to remind you, this is the growth of only about four days here. Well, this is probably the fifth day. All right, because I, I started them on, uh, oh, what day did I start them? I think it was like uh, last Wednesday. Or Thursday Thursday I believe Thursday I got in the lids I was just hoping that they come in for Friday but they came in on Thursday and Thursday evening I soaked it so it's been like uh, from Thursday evening you know there's one two three four this is like the fifth day for this so you can see you can get a lot of produce out of a little spoonful of seed sprouting seed now this bag of seed cost me I think it was oh close to thirteen dollars shipping and handling and all I would have got it cheaper had I gone to a uh, feed store where you can buy feed for livestock and such they usually will sell radish and uh, you have to be careful with the alfalfa seed though because a lot of the alfalfa seed is now GMO you have to make sure it's non-GMO. You don't want to poison yourself or do nothing stupid like put them into your holy temple. But I could have bought a pound of each of those. Radish seed, I was paying uh, when I was in Texas about, oh, five or six dollars for a pound bag of radish seeds. And I had gotten a couple different varieties. I also bought like broccoli and turnip and, you know, smaller seeds and I would not make my own mixtures with all sorts of seed and it was always marvelous if you don't like spicy you might want to cut out on the uh, radish seeds a little bit 
Radish is very, very excellent for your health. It keeps your lymph nodes clean and things of this sort. So I do highly recommend that you uh, do use some radish seeds in there. Alfalfa is very beneficial. I used to feed alfalfa to my goats and I had the best milk in the entire state of Texas from what people told me. People came from all over to get my milk. Now, there's a lot of food in here. I, I would have to say that there's probably a pound, pound and a half of vegetation here that's fresh. Uh, it's full of nutrients. Very, very great for your digestion. Uh, and it only took one of these and about a quarter that I put in here. And this is what I got in about five days time. So it's great to have, you know, several of these lids. You can, you know, especially if you've got a large family. There's only me here to eat this. So I'll probably start me another jar of this tonight. And I'll eat this over the next couple days, you know, on sandwiches or whatever. As my next jar will start to grow. Like I say, two, three times a day, rinse these off. Don't shake them hard. You know, just... Let the liquid pour out of it enough, and then set it down on the plate, just like that. Just let it set. Next time you rinse, the same thing. Put a little bit of liquid in there, you know, fill it up to about here, and then just, you know, gently turn it. In that way, the water's going to wash all these sprouts and get rid of, you know, anything that's old on there. You know, as they grow, they do put out things, and the water will come out murky. And then I actually use the water that comes off these uh, to help with the sprouts that I'm, not sprouts, but the little plants that I'm trying to start here, the Armenian cucumbers and, you know, my Swiss chard, things like that. So anyway, my friends, I just wanted to uh, say hi to you, hoping that you are not going bananas. Remember the hydrogen peroxide trick, just put it into a regular bottle. You can spray down with it. As you know, hydrogen peroxide is excellent for uh, killing things that are harmful that you cannot see with your eye. And it will also help to last your uh, produce even longer. And if you got lettuce or something, you know, heads of lettuce, cut off the, the rusty part off the bottom before you soak it. Okay, and it will help keep it fresh a whole lot longer as well. Uh, hydrogen peroxide does really well. I was going to show you my bottle of 12% uh, hydrogen peroxide I got, but somehow it built up pressure in the bottle and it leaked all over. My fingers were all white when I pulled it out because I didn't quite realize it. But you can use 12% hydrogen peroxide a few drops you know like a teaspoon or so in a bottle like this filled with water uh, they also have it all the way up to 35 percent hydrogen peroxide difficult to get a hold of very beneficial helps the food last much longer uh, you can spray down doorknobs everything else with that as well to help uh, you know clean things it oxidizes uh, the germs and the bugs and such and they don't really care much for oxygen uh, you could also use baking soda, not baking powder. Baking powder will kill you. That stuff's made from phosphates. You can use baking soda, which will uh, create the environment to become alkaline. And most of your germs and bugs and viruses don't like an alkaline environment. They much prefer acidic. So keep these things in mind, you know, if you don't have hydrogen peroxide, you can certainly wash your vegetables off with uh, baking soda. And, uh, you know, like I say, fill up a sink or whatever and let it set, you know, mix the baking soda in the water, after, make a paste and wash down your vegetables with it. It'll, it'll scrub them. Uh, you know, of course, with lettuce, you won't be able to do that, but you can mix the baking soda in with the water and then soak them and that should help with a whole lot of uh, the problems that you would get from not cleaning your vegetables. 
Uh, but as far as just running a melon underneath a stream of water for 20 seconds, you know, you're supposed to, <laughs> what really got me, and I was sitting there laughing because it says, you should do just like you do with your hands. And the lady lathers up her hands, you know, for 20 seconds, she shows on the video. That's how you do it. And then she just takes the melon and runs it under, there's no soap on there, there's no scrubbing on there, <laughs> going on at all, just running it under the water, you know, and it's like, these people, they, they are so blind, they just cannot see. But I'm sure she put Purell on her hands <laughs> before she started handling the vegetables too, so. Anyway, with that, my friends, I'm praying for you all, I hope that y'all don't go uh, batty, uh, don't do things that you shouldn't do. If you really feel like you're about at your uh, wits ends, get on your knees and ask, you know, our king to guide you and to help others. Forget about yourself while you're praying. Remember your brothers and your sisters and the faith. And uh, you'll get through this. We'll all get through this. Our king is going to return whether we're here to see him or not. And there's only going to be a few men left when he does return as Isaiah chapter 24 speaks about. So as you go through your scriptures, from Genesis 1-1 all the way through, and you get up there, you know, to Isaiah chapter 24, pay particular attention, especially in Deuteronomy 28 as well. And then uh, when you get to Jeremiah chapter 23, it should be quite a thrill that it'll show you about these uh, worldly preachers that are out there right now making a living off the people buying jets and flying around and all sorts of stuff and teaching lies. You're not going to hear lies here on this channel unless I'm, I'm speaking about what other people are teaching. I don't teach lies because the scriptures is all I teach from and they don't lie. And with that, my friends, I love you all and uh, peace, man. Peace. <laughs>